All right, I stayed up last night until like uh, three in the morning, basically writing this essay that I thought everybody was going to be so excited about, and like four people read it. So I figured, why not do a video blog since everybody that watches the videos on Facebook. Here's where we're going. I want to encourage you to buy precious metals. You need to buy them like right away. I tr I've been telling people to buy silver since it was at $9 an ounce. Here, I'll show you. This here is an Engelhard bar of silver. It's 10 ounces. Just a few months ago when I bought it, it was about $100. Today, this is going for, look it up on eBay. Uh, it's an Engelhard 10 ounce silver bar. Okay, look it up on eBay. You will find these for approximately, I bet you the cheapest you'll find one of these is for $195. Okay, this was $100 two months ago. See, what's neat about silver is it's portable, divisible wealth. You can't print this stuff. You can't, you can't make this stuff. Nobody can make this stuff up. And the neatest thing about it is it's necessary for life. Okay, this laptop computer that I'm filming off of my MacBook it requires about a quarter's worth of silver in it for it to work. It's not a lot. When you think of every computer in the world, that's a lot of silver. When you think of every cell phone in the world, that's a lot of silver. When you think of the fact that every LCD projector, every plasma TV, every single light switch, um, all of the electronics that you use on a day-to-day -day basis require silver in their circuits. And so it's necessary for us to live. <clears throat> Let me show you something else. This here is the United States dollar bill. This has no intrinsic value. I can't wear it. I can't turn it into electronics. I can't do anything with it. This is a U.S. $20 bill. What's the difference between a $1 bill and a $20 bill? Good answer. One buys more. But what is the fundamental difference? Why does the $20, why is this one so much worth so much more than this one? And it's simply because the government tells you that there are more of these or less of these available than these. That's it. That's simply the difference. There, there's going to be, these are more readily available than these. These are scarcer. Let me show you something. Back in the day, we used to have money and currency. Now, we just have currency. If you read at the top of this note, it says, this is an original dollar when they made them, the greenbacks. It says, a silver certificate. And down here, it says that this, this certificate can be, can be taken to a bank, and I can get one ounce of silver with it. This is a real dollar that they had back in the day. Now, today they give us this dollar. They're a little different. This one is a Federal Reserve note. If you took this to the bank and asked for an ounce of silver, the lady would look at you like you were crazy. Okay, back in the day, these notes, these bought a lot of stuff. My grandma told me that with $20, she could heat her home for an entire year. Okay, for the whole winter, she could heat her home with just 20 bucks. Why can't you do that today? You want to know why? Because they stopped making these be able to be redeemable for silver, and they made these ones, which means that they can print as many as they want. This is just, these things, these are just trash. Let me show you something else here. I got another bill here. This is a Zimbabwe dollar. This is a 100 billion dollar bill. 100 billion dollars in Zimbabwe dollars. Okay, this is their currency. I ordered this on eBay. Now, what happened was, <coughs> when I ordered this, it cost eight dollars. Okay, a few months later, they came out with the 100 trillion, first they came out with the trillion, and then they came out with a 100 trillion dollar bill. The $100 trillion bill basically made this $100 billion bill worthless. But what the heck happened? What is the difference between this and this and this? Nothing. The only difference is that the government behind it is more trustworthy than another. But every government 
is stealing your money by inflating the currency. See, follow me here. There was a point where one of these, you could cash it in just five years ago for one Zimbabwe dollar. Okay? So if I had one of these, I could buy, I, I could have a Zimbabwe dollar. Let's say I had like, let's say, just for sake of it, let's say I had a hundred billion dollars, U.S. dollars. That's a lot of money. And I were to trans, transfer them into Zimbabwe dollars, we're talking five years ago. Okay, so I'd be a billionaire. I'd be rich. If I wanted to go out and buy bread, and bread costs a dollar, I could buy a hundred billion loaves of bread. That's a lot of bread, but let's say, just for the sake of it, that I wanted to buy that. I could go out and buy a hundred billion loaves of bread if I had a hundred billion, you know, Zimbabwe dollars five years ago. However, today, with a hundred billion Zimbabwe note, I can't even buy one loaf of bread because I need the hundred trillion dollar note. See, what happened was the government inflated the currency. They hyperinflated the currency. Okay? And so anybody who saved any money was wiped out. Anybody who had any debt, the debt was wiped out. So let's say you had a house and there was a million dollar loan mortgage on that house. Well, if I had it five years ago, I could pay it with this right now. And it's a totally worthless bill, $500 billion, which doesn't even buy me a pack of chewing gum or you know, or a Tic Tac, you know, this here is totally worthless. It's not even worth the value of the paper. Um, in parts of Zimbabwe, they use the old dollars just, just to start fires and to heat their home. <coughs> so, um, my point is, when a currency is inflated at a hyper rate, um, your debts become wiped out, and so do your assets, so does, does your bank account.